I solemnly swear to use my scientific knowledge and skills for the benefit of society. And my veterinary colleagues and I repeated those words and entered the veterinary medical profession. We had just uh, assumed and acquired the value of a lifetime, the value of our veterinary diploma. I suspect that each of you in other various uh, professional disciplines earned a similar value when you received your respective diploma or certificate as well. And with that value also comes responsibility. I believe it is most fitting as we convene together at this annual meeting of the National Institute of Animal Agriculture and seek to enhance our partnership among various disciplines and institutions from around the country and, and even the world to ask the questions, what is our value and responsibility as health science related professionals? What is the value and responsibility of our professional associations, organizations, or agencies? Two critical issues are at the focal point of this responsibility, education and workforce. And these two cannot be separated. The accredited colleges and schools of our various professional disciplines are an important and uh, essential resource for our next generation in fulfilling critically important roles in our society. However, as we consider our various disciplines and look at veterinary medicine in particular, we need an increase in, in the number of veterinarians and in numbers and in diversity of uh, our various interests. Professional interests need to be expanded to public health, biomedical research, the areas of food supply, veterinary medicine, and, and uh, rural practice to academia and government service. We also need an increase in our diversity of race, gender, and ethnicity if we are to meet the growing demands of our profession. Critical paradigm shifts are also needed in our approach to education if we are to meet our growing role. We need creative approaches such as collaborative training across universities and colleges. And we need to bridge relationships among our disciplines, extending veterinary medicine with human medicine, public health, bioengineering, and the animal, human, and life sciences. Three recent studies have been uh, release which underscore the urgent need for more veterinarians but also the need for this interdisciplinary interaction. One of the studies was conducted by the Food Supply Veterinary Medicine Coalition estimating food supply veterinary medicine demand and maintaining the availability of veterinarians in the careers in the food supply discipline. This particular study was actually uh, directed from uh, nearby Kansas State University. Two other studies were conducted by the National Academies of Sciences. Animal Health at the Crossroads, Preventing, Detecting, and Diagnosing Animal Diseases, and Sustaining Global Surveillance in Response to Emerging and Zoonotic Diseases. This study was just completed and released this past year. The overriding recommendations from all of these studies pointed towards improved communication, coordination and collaboration among our various professional associations, academia, government organizations, non-governmental organizations, and industry. Animal health and human health are truly at a crossroads. The convergence of animal health, human health, and ecosystem health dictates that the One Health concept must be embraced. Consider these facts uh, as we look at uh, One Health. 75% of all the emerging diseases worldwide in the past three decades are zoonotic. 38,000 animals cross the U.S. borders every day. And 24 billion animals were utilized for food and fiber last year alone. 24 billion animals to feed a population of over, just over 6 billion people, as uh, Dr. Brown illustrated. And it's an estimated, again, that by the end of this decade, by 2020, the demand for animal protein will increase worldwide by 50%, particularly in the developing countries. 
In 2006, the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences revealed a strategic plan for the entire, the entire scientific community. It emphasized the use of environmental sciences to better improve and study human diseases and to prove, improve human health. It stated that almost every human disease can be caused, modified, or altered by an environmental agent. Tuberculosis, HIV, West Nile virus, monkeypox, avian influenza, and many more certainly prove this statement. They also underscore the concept of One Health. And as we embrace the, the uh, One Health approach, we also strengthen by, or by strengthening our relations uh, nationally and internationally with various organizations such as the World Health Organization the World Organization for Animal Health, and the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. These relationships will enhance the improvement of global health and development. I'd like to, uh, as we consider the One Health, uh, certainly the One Health concept is not new. And I'd like to pause for a few moments and uh, share with you a little bit of the uh, milestones that have related to the One Health approach over the past 250 years, beginning with the first uh, School of Veterinary Medicine in, 19, in 1761. In the 17, 1750s, human medicine was advancing rapidly in, in France, but the Academy of Sciences in Paris actually recognized the increasing and, and uh, recurring diseases in animals, particularly in cattle and horses, and particularly the cattle plague or render pest. They became concerned about uh, meeting the, the concern about meeting these animal diseases and took action and to and recognize the need for trained professionals to actually control and prevent these diseases. And with that, they established the first veterinary school in 1761, 250 years ago. The World Veterinary Year 2011 2011, which will be celebrated this next year, will actually recognize the contributions of veterinary medicine to society over the past 250 years. And the theme for this entire year of focus will be on One Health. In 1796, the English physician, uh, Edward Jenner, uh, developed a theory concern related to the transmission of cowpox and the people who had, uh, the dairymaids and dairymen who uh, acquired that particular infection, their uh, immunity or non-susceptibility to smallpox. And so he tested this theory on a young boy by inoculating him with the fluid from a cowpox blister, and then a few months later inoculated him with the matter, uh, the virulent matter from a smallpox uh, lesion. This particular boy did not uh, develop smallpox, and, and with that, the vaccination process was actually born. The German scientist uh, Rudolf Virchow, in the uh, late eight, or early 1800s, uh, uh, studied the diseased body tissues of animals and related those findings to those he found in humans, and he became known as the father of comparative pathology. The Canadian physician, uh, Sir William Osler, in the late 1800s, he was the founder of the medical school teaching uh, concept at Johns Hopkins University. And he stated that veterinary medicine and human medicine complement each other and should be considered as one medicine. He became known as the father of one medicine. The scientist uh, work, uh, the scientific work of uh, Louis Pasteur, in the, again in the late 1800s, where he uh, developed various vaccines in, in animals. Uh, he developed vaccines towards uh, 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 foul cholera, anthrax, and uh, with that, uh, and also swine air syphilis. With those uh, developments, he then, uh, through his efforts, developed a vaccine that would prevent the, the rabies uh, to, anim to humans who are exposed to the rabies. and. Uh, his scientific work and demonstrated the value of comparative medicine and biomedical research. And then in the 20th century, uh, we have uh, pioneers such as uh, 
former Surgeon General James Steele, who epitomizes One Health. Through his efforts, he established the first veterinary program at the Center for Disease Control and established uh, veterinarians as part of the U.S. Public Health Service in 1947. And then uh, finally, uh, many of our current veterinary colleagues were students under uh, Dr. Calvin Swaby, who uh, uh, profoundly articulated the concept of One Health through his book, Veterinary Medicine and Human Health. A changing environment populated by interconnected animals and people create integrated challenges. As we look at this diagram, it becomes even more complex as we interchange animals and humans and have carrier humans and vulnerable animals, such as the case with the recent H1N1. And these integrated challenges require integrated solutions and call for uh, collaborative leadership. It was upon that basis for collaborative leadership that um, as I was installed as president of the AVMA in uh, July of 2006, that I revealed the vision for the One Health Initiative. One of the most significant uh, collaborative relationships developed during that time or during my term was the relationship between the AMA, AVMA and the American Medical Association. Soon after becoming installed as president, I contacted the newly elected president-elect, the late Dr. Ronald Davis of the American Medical Association. Dr. Davis was a public health physician, and he was the first public health physician ever to serve as president of the AMA. When I shared my vision with him, he immediately embraced it, and together through our respective leadership roles, we brought our, were able to lead our two uh, respective uh, professional organizations together in a collaborative manner. In April 2007, the AVMA assumed a major leadership position by establishing the uh, One Health Initiative Task Force. This task force was uh, uh, comprised of 13 uh, members, and uh, those individuals came from various uh, uh, health science professions, government agencies, as well as uh, uh, academia, and as well as uh, government, uh, industry. But three months after we established the commission, the AMA took official action to establish a policy within their House of Delegates that called for the AMA to enter into a collaborative relationship and dialogue with the AVMA to discuss strategies towards this collaboration of veterinary and human medicine. And they appointed a representative to the uh, One Health Initiative Task Force. This 13-member task force, as I mentioned, uh, was, uh, was broad-based, but I also want to emphasize the importance of uh, representation from the students on this particular task force. We had two students, the president of the Student American Veterinary Medical Association, and then also a a representative student from the AMA, a second year medical student. We find that the One Health concept resonates with students and it's very important and very advantageous to involve our students and recent graduates in the effort. The task force completed its charge in June of 2008 and presented its report to the AVMA Executive Board the executive summary and recommendations were then published in the July 15, 2008 edition or issue of the Journal of the AVMA. The final report is available online on the AVMA website uh, linking to One Health. The task force defined One Health as the collaborative effort of multiple disciplines working locally, nationally, and internationally and globally to attain optimal health for people, animals, and our environment. Hence, One Health, World Health Through Collaboration. As mentioned, the concept is certainly not new, but the call for a new professional imperative has emerged. The scope of One Health is certainly broad and extensive. And as Dr. Brown very well illustrated, 
At the top of that scope is ensuring a safe food and secure food and water supply that is of high quality, available, and affordable. As we look at the various other aspects of the scope of One Health, we find that they, in most all cases, either directly or indirectly, relate to this number one uh, focus on ensuring a safe and secure food and water supply. The convergence of animal and human health and the convergence with our health of our environment. Disease prevention, surveillance and response. Clinical medicine demand for interprofessional relationships as a focus on various uh, uh, diseases, not only zoonotic diseases, but also the commonality of uh, diseases. Research with clinical and translational or comparative. And then additionally, as uh, Dr. Brown illustrated, the global trade, the various public policies, both uh, national and international, in agricultural production and land use in general. And, and all, certainly uh, uh, the education, both training and education of our various health science disciplines. The 12 recommendations from the One Health Initiative Task Force form the basic outline for the One Health Initiative. And the first recommendation was fulfilled with the establishment of the One Health Joint Steering Committee, which was an independent, multidisciplinary, 18-member uh, committee. This particular Joint Steering Committee facilitated, facilitated the transitioning process from the efforts of the task force to the establishment of a non-profit, independent One Health Commission. The Rockefeller Foundation provided a significant uh, funding support for this transitioning process with the purpose of establishing the One Health uh, Initiative uh, or One Health uh, Commission. The One Health Commission was officially chartered in, on June 29, 2009 in Washington, D.C. with uh, eight institutional members. The eight associations represented as founding members including academia, provide a broad-based uh, coalition for the focus on and development towards One Health. The Commission is currently finalizing its uh, strategic business plan at the presently, and three goals are, have, been, have been identified to achieve the mission of One Health. Number one is to provide needed leadership to develop and implement an integrated strategy by establishing a center for One Health communications and resources. Secondly, to inform all audiences about the importance of One Health approach and by leading, being, becoming a leader communicator of One Health information. And finally, to transform the way that animal, human, and ecosystem health disciplines and institutions work together by facilitating and promoting collaborative efforts that illustrate the One Health and the value of the One Health approach. Just four months ago, the One Health Commission con uh, conducted its inaugural event, a One Health Summit, in partnership with the National Academies of Sciences in Washington, D.C. This One Health Summit not only served as a basis for establishing and setting the stage for the work of the One Health Commission, but it also served as a forerunner for a Institute of Medicine National Research Council One Health Study. And this has been identified and, and uh, projected to be established and uh, be initiated this coming spring. This proposed consensus study will provide an evidence-based rationale for the approach uh, on, towards One Health and will establish recommendations and guidelines which will lead and help guide and define a roadmap for both domestic and international approach to One Health. In addition, when a, a prioritized research agenda is called for within its statement of purpose. Potential outcomes that can be anticipated from a One Health approach include more interdisciplinary programs related to research, education and training, and establishing policy. More information sharing 
related to disease detection and surveillance and other clinical practice needs, but also related to research, education, and policy. More prevention of diseases, both infectious diseases and chronic diseases, such as cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and new therapies and new approaches to treatment for unmet needs. I envision that the success of the One Health Initiative will ultimately lead to an integrated international strategy for One Health. The value of, uh, of uh, international collaboration and working towards that will be pursued by the uh, One Health Commission to essentially establish this international collaboration and improve global health and development. In closing, I'd like to reflect and go back to where I started, value and responsibility. What is our value and responsibility as health science-related professionals? What is the value and responsibility of our professional associations, organizations, and agencies? By, it's my, it is, it is my vision and, uh, and fervent hope that by working together and bringing together our various health science professionals, our professional associations, academia, colleges and schools, government agencies, non-governmental organizations, that we will assume our collaborative responsibility. By working together, we can convert our, our, uh, uh, our collaborative responsibility to promote and protect our measurable value to utilize that value to its fullest and to ensure that our future is a promising future, a future of even greater value. By working together, we can convert our 21st century challenges into opportunities, truly improving the lives of our patients, our clients, our constituents, our colleagues, our society in general. One Health, World Health Through Collaboration. That, my colleagues and friends, translates to value and responsibility.